Hi, good afternoon. Can you hear me there? Maybe, I don't know if I don't need. Thank you for the check-in. So uh, I'm very glad to present today. Uh, these two initiatives are more uh, community-driven initiatives uh, to uh, mean to make computer vision and environmental data science more accessible. And my, myself, I'm a research fellow at the Anatoly Institute working for the data science of science and humanity. And I'm honored to present with Alan, who is as well part of this uh, project, the inside vision project that was insected at the Turin. So, yeah, okay. you want to I'll stay, start? I'll stand up here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Alden. I am a senior researcher for research applications at the Turin in the Tools, Practices, and Systems uh, program. And it's been great to see so many of you on your posters talking about data and interoperability and, and reuse, that's what we really focus on in tools, practices, and systems. And um, one of the tools for this is called SciVision. So it's a toolkit for scientific image analysis. Basically, we uh, want to recognize the fact that a lot of different problems that use imaging and computer vision to analyze those images um, are facing similar challenges, even though they might be from absolutely different domains. So I'm actually a, a neurobiologist by training. That's my background. Um, but we've got people like we've seen today looking at tree crowns, um, you know, different mapping and, and astronomy even. Um, we've had some, some cool collaborations through SciVision. And so the idea is to make a, a generic platform that will allow people to discover and share methods in computer vision as well as data so that um, they can find what well, rather than inventing a new a new version of something that's already been done go and discover something that exists that could work for your data so the the mission of SciVision is to solve real world challenges and democratize computer vision um, but to support interdisciplinary and international researchers and basically the idea is that we have, you know, people developing algorithms, developing models, um, using computer vision, and we have data owners and we want to bring them together. So we have this catalog where people can, um, people can upload either models themselves. So we have, we have several pre-trained models in there, but we're trying to collect a broader array of, of different models um, and have them in the catalog so people can see how they work and what kind of data they might, they might be useful for, as well as um, a catalog of data sets so that if you have data and you don't necessarily know um, how to, either way, if you have data and you want to find a model to apply to it, you could try looking at a catalog for models, see if anything might be um, effective for your data, but you could also upload data that someone else could then use and try to, try to test out a new model or create a new model using that. So I'm going to let um, Alejandro speak a little more about the specifics. Yeah, uh, in terms of aims, like, as I said, one of the end users that we identify so far are developers. So we are we are aiming to enable they, they these kind of users, or oh, so user not developers, to distribute their tools. Uh, we have the front end. If you visit now, the vision is the, the front end. Uh, now you easily can add your model and you can have the model into to kind of option. In loadable inside vision, we have our API in Python and just provide the, the GitHub repository. We at the moment try to be flexible with these two kind of inputs from the uh, developers uh, uh, community. And as well for data, those one are data producers and as well they can submit their data to this uh, catalog that we call so far. And in this case, you can see uh, a diversity of, at the moment, the current images that we have. We have uh, bioimaging examples and other about plant, plant, plant life science and as well something about environmental science. So we would like to empower uh, these data providers and discover these latest computer vision algorithms and apply them to these uh, different images. And finally, we are also aiming to provide in a bridge between different data scales and formats. and not related at all, but we have as well a project staff where you can find different projects that being like pairing these data sets and models that are available in the catalog, and you can as well run some notebooks or demonstrators that we are also trying to maintain as a, a the Turing. But as well, anyone can submit their projects and would like to have more visibility on the projects using computer vision models. Uh, at the Turing, we somehow uh, this idea start with uh, Scott that was here and is not now. And he was one of the PIs, and we have another PIs working in uh, life science and another working more in, in, in uh, agriculture. 
But in the case of the environmental sustainability, we just got, we start with these projects, and this is kind of the challenge that you can find in related to computer vision. This morning we saw this one about three crown, but there is also a lot of like uh, super resolution on the definition in satellite images. And uh, something about very important here at the British Antarctic Survey is this iceberg detection and tracking. But you see, uh, sorry, in, in, plant, in plant, plant science or culture, there are images that have all kinds of challenges. You can find images that are 3D. And that's why uh, my colleague, Ivy, that is part of the submission team, she had this kind of challenge to uh, create a uh, computer vision models to try to do this kind of detecting seed pods from this kind of uh, CT scans. Uh, my colleague and her team is working as well with this plant phenotyping images and as well, uh, very common in, among environmental scientists is using these satellite images to do some uh, classification or cementation. I'm very interested in about this bioimaging. When I start working with these diverse groups of postdoc, I know that uh, they are working as well with very noisy images. And if you see this, you say what well, they are extracting for these images. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with protein analysis, but it's very complex, uh, very high, dim high dimensional data set that they play with. But in somehow, the algorithms that they are using for uh, tracking this analysis, these images can be transferred to our own images in environmental science. So it's very interesting. For instance, they are doing a lot of graph uh, neural networks for uh, mapping and, and separating different proteins from these images that we don't understand, but uh, this kind of algorithm, uh, my colleagues are working on this. Uh, a very successful example in vision that why this uh, transfer landing between domains and domains is very, very relevant. At the Turing, uh, there is uh, a research that was developed uh, for analyzing historical maps, and they were able to use, uh, they developed a kind of uh, like deep learning, like package or use deep learning models for doing some uh, patch based uh, mapping of uh, highways and certain roads in from historical uh, UK maps. And what my collective did was to try the same model, but in order to try and detect uh, leaves and flowers. And she used this same patch based classification algorithm that was initially developed for that specific purpose and she transferred successfully to, not, to her specific kind of application. So this is the only thing that we are aiming to facilitate and foster among the community to try to transfer this different knowledge among the, among the different uh, domains and try to be a plan for where people can explore this very easily. I, I won't take a long time of the priority areas, but just to let you know, apart from having your contribution model and data sets, uh, we are working very strong in certain areas. Uh, one of that is the core features. I, I would like to say that there is a hard work here because uh, sometimes models, they develop with certain dependencies and some of them work in TensorFlow, certain version, and some of them work with PyTorch, if you are familiar with the libraries. And handling the list and having those servable to run with an image is very challenging. So we are working on that, how to handle these dependencies conflicts. Uh, in terms of the automation, uh, we are working in facilitating uh, how uh, users can start creating their own data set and logging data sets uh, using template repositories. Because in order to be loadable in Cybition, you need to reformat your code to be uh, readable for Cybition. So we are working on that. Uh, in terms of the web interface, uh, something that is not available now is uh, that if you go to a data set, uh, is we will have a kind of feature maybe related with the AI that is going to suggest which model you can run this data set with. And it's something that we are working. We are working to improve the model cars. And in terms of community engagement, I guess it's very important here. And that's why Alden uh, started this. The Alden that is part of the TPS team, they are helping us to grow as a community because there is a huge opportunity to here to connect different uh, domains and as well to create a hub of for best practices how to share computer vision models and how to share data sets. So we would like to lead this aspect at least through this vision. And finally, uh, we would like to support use cases and that's why here we are presenting this in the uh, environmental UK environmental uh, community and trying to see uh, if you have any computer related uh, vision uh, tasks or no data set or model you can share. Uh, these are the kind of tasks that we are focusing in the next three years. Sci vision is funded for the next three years. And we are aiming to have more examples about super resolution, examples about object tracking, and we are aiming to support 
use cases like that, and as well check in the identification that is common across domains and other image based research challenges. So that's the vision. We have a newsletter that <laughs> everyone is welcome. Uh, if you want, want to learn more, uh, you're welcome to uh, scan this QR, QR, QR code. And really, we have a newsletter we are aiming to facilitate this conversation uh, across domains. Okay, I guess I haven't finished. So now uh, we move to EDS book. EDS book is another community uh, driven initiative. It's uh, inspired by the Turing Way. Maybe you're not familiar about the Turing Way, but Turing Way is a, is a community as well, platform that is aiming to uh, generate more knowledge and try to have more collaborative, ethical, uh, and, and, and reproducible data science. And we, it's a global community. But essentially, I started and leading this project because I found opportunity how we as environmental scientists can communicate our staff could be data set, research, or pilots through uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Maybe may I ask who are familiar with Jupyter Notebooks? Are you maybe not all people are familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, so it's good to us. Jupyter Notebooks are uh, interactive computing. Uh, they define like that where you have a narrative and you can add code and you can run this in an interactive manner. You don't need to run like uh, from uh, beginning to end in a one in one run, but you can run uh, each of the cells in, in somehow. That's the, the main concept. So essentially, we are exploiting this format to uh, to build this community that is aiming to highlight what we are doing in environmental data science. And, and essentially, you can see here we have this diverse of use cases, and essentially we are maximizing this format to produce most new ideas. And the thing that you will see later, we are aiming to highlight reproducible, scalable, and shareable uh, the environmental data science. So, sorry, I don't know what to do this. Uh, uh, so our mission is to educate and leverage good scientific software and data management practices among environmental scientists through peer reviewer, fair, executable notebooks. Maybe fair is a common uh, line running, but essentially it's uh, the way forward that now people are thinking about good practices in terms of data sharing. So we are aiming that these executable nodes as a software are as well uh, findable, accessible, and interoperable and reusable. And our mission is that uh, us as environmental scientists work collaborative to demonstrate and communicate science through fair executable nodes. And we have gained significant skill to publish in notebooks based scholarly publication system. What, what I'm making emphasis here because I think the future of digital journals uh, is like that. Like, People share the narrative, but you click on the figure and you can see what is the code that you generate this figure. So this is part of the format. And I guess one of the format that is being prototyping for that in the future is uh, the Jupyter file format. And there is a, indeed an initiative in the American Geoscience Unit that is not now, and they are aiming to have a prototype of this system. So EDF Wood is training researchers in that way, in that, in that like, vision of having this as a primary uh, format for publication. So this is the gallery that we have uh, so far. If you go to the, this book, it's been notebook that being contributed by the community. And essentially we have a gallery of these fair notebooks. And uh, we have in the title, we have some tags that say this topic is about this topic. We're trying to have these badges. Maybe we are uh, checking if this is something that is useful in, in, in the future. But most important here is about having this badge about the review. So people can check uh, what, what was the first draft of the notebook, and they can see how with the comments of the community who reviewed the notebook, this notebook have the final version. So the aim is to improve uh, having high quality notebooks. And this is very common, and this notebook we are trying to check that they are running uh, through GitHub actions. I won't go into the technicalities of this. And this is a summary of this community-led notebook. So essentially, uh, someone like me that was doing my PhD four years ago, I went to a notebook and I found I cannot run the notebook. I don't know which is the data provider. They are not making a clear statement who are the original code base. So all things, all, all things we can improve like through community. And that's why we have reviewers. We have people who kind of did that. We are finishing, I don't know. If I... So are you okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> And at the end, uh, very important is that we are aiming that these notebooks you can reuse for other purposes. And that's why in this illustration we have different uh, boots of different colors. So, so that's, that's something that you can achieve when you have high quality notebooks. I won't go in details, but 
we are not aiming to be a publishing journal. We are aiming just to people get familiar how you can publish uh, open source software. And uh, we are taking some stages. I don't know if you're familiar with the journal of open source software. And they have these stages where you have the review, review. So this kind of as well of the training process that you learn. And it's something that we are meant to improve in the platform, maybe the future, because at the moment everything is in GitHub. And there are people that even they don't know how to uh, do comments in GitHub. And there is a long process. So I guess it's, it's, it's something that uh, we've been learning through this initiative. Uh, key achievements, we have some guidance, we have uh, templates uh, about how to uh, start your first notebook. We have at the moment the notebooks and, and these notebooks are uh, reproducible in Binder. Uh, we are trying to have uh, this fair research object where people know can know all the metadata of the notebooks so people can know which is the conduct or software requirements to run this in your local computer or how you can run this in, in Binder. All this kind of information we are trying to track uh, through a, a, a fair a, a, a platform that is suited to have fair research objects. And finally, we have some community meetings that we are no longer running. And uh, it's basically because it's very demanding to maintain a community like this. We are in, in somehow partnering with the Turing Way and we are in somehow we are we are uh, hosting this community meetings now in the Turing Way collaboration cafes. Uh, presently, uh, thanks to this technology that our infrastructure that we have provided, we run this uh, with the climate informatics. A conference that was at Cambridge in, 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 it was in April. We run the reproducibility challenge and uh, we use the infrastructure here of the EDS boot to order to say people, okay, we, we have this paper that was published in EDS journal that is uh, of Cambridge University Press. We say to the participants, please, can you get the same results? But in this case, try to make your reports using interactive Jupyter notebooks. And that was the kind of the approach that we use it in the challenge. And I guess we're very innovative in running this challenge because they, we, they use this Jupyter notebook. So if you want to see the report and how they were successful, you can run uh, how they generate the reproducibility task. So it's something that is very interesting about the challenge. Uh, something that I would like to highlight is that these notebooks are still work in progress, but we are going to release them soon in the EDS book uh, uh, gallery. So in total, we have three teams at the end who completed the challenge. That was very interesting. Uh, as well, something about nice about running this with Jupyter Notebooks is you can have many contributions. And in particular, because we are doing this peer review process, we have people who do the reviewer or who will do the judging. We have some guest speakers and we have some uh, like different contributors that you can see here. We did this with the University of Cambridge, Syscale provide uh, cloud resources and Simula in Norway that as well help us to manage this. And finally, in terms of priority areas of this initiative, uh, it's something that is uh, this platform aims to be a, a platform where at least Turing is aiming to publish, uh, like demonstrate certain research of Turing researchers and collaborators. So we are mean that the this book would be a central platform where you will see Turing researchers' uh, 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 analysis in, in environmental science. Uh, but for that, we uh, need to improve some core features. We are in notebook, you can add many annotations, so we are meant to increase information in the notebook format, like which is the uh, software requirements uh, inside the metadata of the notebook, which is the uh, author affiliation. So there are many things going on there. And uh, in terms of the front end, we would like to have better user experience and improve the gallery tasks. Uh, this is very important now about the multi-layer notebooks. It's something that I would like to, to maybe in the notebooks to experiment is like in the notebooks, you can see the, the scientific outcome, but if I am decision maker, I would like to only read this narrative that is specifically for decision making. So maybe I can have a kind of filter that say, I would like to read only the narrative that is essential for decision making. So I would, that's what I mean with mean by multilateral notebooks. And finally, uh, we are supporting uh, uh, not only Python notebooks, we are supported by uh, notebooks in Julia and in JavaScript. And we would like to host more activities, cohort more activities with Research Network, like we did with the Climate Informatics. That was well, very valuable experience for the community and to improve the infrastructure of this resource. And you can follow us, visit us, or start us uh, in the, our different channels of uh, communication that we have. Thank you.
while John gets Rachel to talk up, because Rachel's doing remotely, can I ask a question, please? So regarding side vision, what are some advantages of creating a platform for ecology or nature ML models instead of using a general platform like Hugging Face? Does that mean? Well, I would say that there's um please on. Yeah, we have we actually have overlap. So you know, a platform like Hugging Face, you could find maybe the same model. Ideally, you know, these models can be shared in both places, right? Because they're they're open. We actually have a couple of models inside vision that are also from, from Hugging Face. Um, so what I would say the advantage is that SciVision is specifically about computer vision, about image data, and Hugging Face would be a broader, a broader kind of platform, but also very valuable. Okay. Um, John's still busy, so has anybody else got a question? Oh, yeah, hang on. Um, when compiling images from different sources in SciVision, do you have any issues with sharing, e.g. usage attribution? Uh, at the moment, and uh, data that we have is uh, data that we know that they have the license to share. And of course, we have some problems like private private data that one colleague is using for plant phenotyping. This data cannot be shared. Mm -hmm. And so vision API, you can run in your own computer and cheat in using internally to demonstrate the capabilities with internal catalogs working only in their own server. So we, we can support both kind of that. Like Pulit is that one that uh, attribution is declared that can be shared, uh, but those ones that is private, of course, they need to use internally with the Sivision API if they want to run the API. Yeah. Okay, thank you very, both very much. Okay, and it's time for Rachel now.